Good morning, residents, and happy Friday. As you can tell, Ty is out of the office this week. He is spending some time with his family for this week and then a little bit of next week as well. So we hope he's enjoying his time away and enjoying the family bonding while we're, while we're here. Today's docket, we are starting with Linda Doherty. She's going to go over the Christmas fund. Uh, explain how that works and the date the start date for that is, is is right away and then I think it ends November 29th if I'm correct so she'll give you more information on how collections for the Christmas fund are, are going. Charlie Farrell is up next. We have a special guest from our concierge care in-home provider. They are a preferred provider of ours. They're going to come on Wednesday of next week uh, with the nitrogen ice cream truck. So residents are more than welcome to come out and attend that and get some ice cream while it's still rather warm outside. Then we have updates from Katie, Community Life Services. We have a lot of festive stuff happening right now with Halloween this coming weekend and then uh, into Veterans Day in November, Thanksgiving and more. Some updates from Dave and Larry regarding maintenance and landscaping. Kylie, she is our new accounting assistant in the business office. She's going to give just a quick overview regarding the rate increase notices that are going to be going out in the coming week. And then we have Barb Hunt Hanaran. She's our new wellness uh, nurse over in the wellness clinic. So she's just going to give a quick tip over uh, October regarding uh, health awareness in October. And then we're going to wrap up with Burger of the Week. We have Brian Burger with us, uh, and he'll be going over that. So sit back, enjoy, grab a cup of coffee and a sticky bun, and I hope you enjoy. Good morning. My name is Linda Doherty, and I chair the Employee Christmas Fund. Uh, this is the time of the year when we express our appreciation to the associates of Cypress Village. Let me start off with what is the Employee Christmas Fund? It's an effort from the very early days of Cypress Village to solicit donations and provide gifts to the associates who make our lives at Cypress what they are. This has been a unique year since most of it we have been living in a COVID world. The Cypress Village associates have done much for us, delivering thousands and thousands of meals with a smile, providing small gifts for us to keep our spirits up. You'll remember coffee, sticky buns, ice cream, pies, flowers, and don't forget the booze, <laughs> setting up many, many opportunities for us to interact virtually and providing much additional communication so that we had the information we needed, even though we were pretty much isolated in our rooms. And most of all, conducting their lives outside of Cypress Village in a manner that has kept us safe. The minuscule level of COVID infection in the staff is so insignificant that Cypress Village should be a model for all senior living communities. As Cypress starts to slowly and safely relax some of the restrictions, let us not forget these things. Let us give them a resounding thank you. It is the only way, other than a smile and a kind word, which are also very important, that we can collectively say thank you to the associates since Cypress Village has policies that preclude giving of individual gifts. Now is that time. The letter with the details was put in your individual in-house box in mid-October. This letter includes the results of a survey that was done with the other five local CCRCs that shows comparative giving levels for their residents. You will see that we can do better. The cutoff date to receive funds for inclusion in this year's gifts is Sunday, November the 29th. Your contributions check should be made payable to the Employee Christmas Fund or ECF. Uh, you can put your check in the box in the Cypress Village Library or on the concierge desk. If you prefer, we included a, an envelope with the letter. You can affix a stamp and mail it to the post office box. 
You can also, if you prefer, set up monthly recurring payments if, if that's more convenient or budget friendly for you. This year, a new uh, aspect to the, to the uh, Christmas fund, all donors will be entered in a raffle for the possibility to win monthly service fee credits ranging from $100 to $500. Raffle tickets will be included in the thank you notes that you receive from the committee. Please keep them in a safe place. The number of chances you receive will be tied to the level of your donation. More joyful generosity equals more chances to win. The raffle will occur in early December and winners will be notified. The gifts to the associates will be distributed in early December giving the associates the funds and time to make a happy Christmas for their families. The letter includes contact information for all of the committee members. Please reach out if you have questions, concerns, anything you'd like to know about the Christmas fund. We'll be glad to get back to you. Thank you, stay safe, and have a great weekend. Good morning, Cypress Village. I'm Charlie, the Assisted Living and Memory Care Sales Manager, and I would like to let everyone know of a wonderful event that's going to be happening on Wednesday, November 4th. Um, it's going to be an ice cream event that we are going to be hosting out in the main circle in front of the building. And um, it's, so it's going to be an ice cream truck, nitrogen ice cream, and they're going to have a variety of smoothies and some other things. But it's going to be a great way for you to come out and mingle and have a treat in this hot 80-degree fall weather but um concierge healthcare will also be there to talk about their home health services and answer any questions you might have so come on out and see us and i look forward to seeing you all and um let's see you soon thank you what you doing there katie are you recording yes. oh hi there cypress village it's katie amador from community life services and i just wanted to give you guys a quick reminder that today we have multiple halloween celebrations going on Friday, October 30th, right now, as you're watching this, we are hosting pumpkin voting in the train lobby from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So stop by the train lobby and place your vote for your favorite decorated pumpkin. And the department which decorated that de uh, pumpkin may just very well win a um, complimentary lunch catered to their office or their department um, from the Community Life Services Department. So make sure you stop by and place your vote. With that being said, we also have our Halloween happy hour today from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Boathouse. Um, if you've not already signed up for that, you can give us a call and we can see if we can squeeze you on to the list. Um, there will be refreshments out there, social distancing will be required, and masks are highly encouraged. So we hope to see you out there if you've signed up. Um, and obviously tomorrow is Halloween. So with that being said, you might see um, a few of our associates and staff members around the campus dressed up and I hope you all will partake a little bit um, as well and consider throwing on a costume and joining us downstairs. Um, I also wanted to give a quick reminder that the Alzheimer's walk is quickly approaching that will take place on Saturday November 7th so not tomorrow but next Saturday and with that being said, we are hosting a um, silent auction in the main lobby on Tuesday and, I'm sorry, Thursday and Friday of next week. So if you are going to be over in the main building or if you live in the towers, please pop down and look at all of the items that we'll have and you can place a silent bid. Obviously, make sure you keep an eye on your bid because you might get outbid. Um, and we will announce the winners of all of the items at the walk on Saturday. And if you're not at the walk on Saturday, we will contact you directly. And all of the funds that we raise from that silent auction will go directly to the Alzheimer's Association, which I am proud to announce that we have met our community fundraising goal um, of $2,000. And with the silent auction funds and um, all of the other checks that we've been receiving, uh, I'm excited to say we are going to surpass our goal so thank you all for your support and we hope to see you out at the walk on saturday november 7th all right good morning everybody just a couple updates for maintenance um i've had a lot of questions about the holes around the new bollards next week we'll be on that and uh by friday we should be have them completed 
A lot of them need more concrete putting put around them at the base. Um, I just got a report this morning that somebody ran one over on Gordonia or by Gordonia anyway, so I'll be checking that out this afternoon. Um, so please be careful around them again. We don't want any more explosions. Uh, another update, the fountain, the control box is on order. I expect to have it early next week. Um, so that should be fixed and back up and running. Uh, otherwise, we'll see the beautification. We had the palm trees around the facility all being cut and trimmed back. Uh, unfortunately, now is the time for the sycamore leaves to stop start falling. So if you didn't know, Tree Amigos is cutting one week, doing leaf removal and bush trimming on the other week. So that is the other week now until March when growing season starts again with the grass. Um, I think that's all the updates I have. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Hello all, Larry with Tree Migos. Uh, you're looking around the property right now. What's well, an off week with mowing. So it looks like a bomb has exploded around the circle with all the sycamore leaves and wow. Um, what we're gonna do for you is on our off week, we're just gonna go ahead and pick up the leaves as best we can, curb, curb appeal. Uh, so Friday morning, probably when you're watching a coffee chat tomorrow, you're going to hear the blowers going. We're going to clean up best we can. Get the place looking sharp for uh, Halloween because you're all going to be all out there trick-or-treating. So i got to have it all uh, tidied up for you. Um, and again, mowing uh, next week. We'll, we'll blow out the beds and uh, we have the, the leaf pickup on the mower now. That's really done, done great for us. Um, Let's see, the, if you've all seen the gazebo um, on William Davis, I just completed that this week and uh, we will continue getting that walkway uh, looking really good. I want y'all to get out in this weather and go walk around, get you a little exercise and enjoy the flowers. Um, and right now you're seeing probably a lot of brown patch. Well, very little actually, but that has been treated. You'll see some brown areas kind of in a circle area and it's and it was treated uh, this week. So that will uh, will be gone soon. Um, other than that, that uh, I don't really have too much more to say. I just uh, have a great Halloween and... Uh... Hi, Cypress Village residents. This is Kylie from the business office. And I just wanted to give a reminder about the annual rate increase letters that will be going out this week. This letter is just saying what your percentage is going to be. It is not a notice that your rate is increasing. When your rate will increase, you will get a letter 60 days before it goes into effect and that will give the monthly total of your service rate. So if you have any questions, please feel free to call me at 904-807-6273. Thanks. Hi everybody, it's your friendly wellness director Barb. I just wanted to say a quick couple of things here this week. Um, I hope everybody's doing well and um, I just wanted to say this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and um, not just for you ladies out there but also for you men. I know that might be a big shock but men also do get breast cancer. We just uh, want to be aware of any changes in our bodies, um, be doing those uh, breast self exams, BSEs every month. Um, make sure that you know you're noticing any changes in your body. Any early signs and symptoms could be anything from pain, even a little bit of pain, to a lump, not only in your breast or your chest area, but also in your armpits. Um, and I know that seems kind of odd, but it can it can be as far down as that. So if you notice any marble kind of feeling. Uh, lump, um, you would want to get that checked out. Um, so any pain, any lumps, um, any discharge, um, any change in the nipple, um, any discharge whether bloody or not bloody, um, those were, would be also things that you would want to uh, get checked out. So um, anyway, and I want to do a big hats off and a salute to breast cancer survivors out there. Um, God love you.
So, um, and finally, um, I just wanted to say we now, not only do we always have water for you, if you come by and visit us in the Wellness Center, which we um, always welcome, definitely. Uh, we have hot drinks we can make you if you're waiting there. Uh, we also have some snacks now, healthy snacks, of course. So, um, and finally, the last thing I wanted to say was um, we have Annie back and we want to welcome her back. So come by and say, welcome back, Annie, because God knows we definitely need two people in that wellness center to make it run efficiently. So, um, all right. And that's it. And I hope you guys have a great week and I hope to see you again next week. Bye. Come on now. What words of wisdom do you have, Claude? Claude, you got any words of wisdom? Huh? Welcome to the Loons Nest Bar and Grill. For the burger of the week next week, we have our normal beef patty with some sherry caramelized onions, Swiss cheese, and then a Cabernet and beef stock demi glace. All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, this is the part of the show that Ty usually goes over local statistics, county statistics. I don't have those with us, but we do have some community statistics that we uh, need to go over. We did see a bit of a spike this last week when we performed testing. Um, we had five new, uh, five employee cases uh, show up, and so they're self-isolating and recovering at home, and we also have two uh, resident cases, two independent living resident cases that uh, we were we became aware of as well, and so they are also isolating at home and recovering, and um, no hospitalizations have come as a result of this, which we're thankful for. Um, but just wanted to let you know that, and given that we have an increase in cases that we've seen here, while it's still relatively low when you consider some of the communities in our area, um, it is more than, I mean, one is more than what we want to see, but it is more than we've seen in weeks past. So we're going to hold for now where we're at in phase two. There was some talk of moving dining into phase 2.5, but we're going to just stay the course right now. And um, we'll see how this next week goes with testing to determine whether or not we even need to take a step back or so. But just keep that in mind. Keep wearing your masks, social distance, wash your hands, and just be mindful uh, of any symptoms that you're feeling. Um, notify the wellness clinic right away, and we can get you tested And uh, if you have any concerns at all. Um, with that being said, we did test all the residents in the skilled nursing facility, and thankfully we have had no positive cases there. And then just yesterday, we tested assisted all the residents in assisted living, and we're awaiting uh, those results. Um, give it, and this was both of those came as a result of the employee cases uh, that came back positive. That's why we tested in those areas. So again, just be mindful. Um, we're not opening up dining yet. Uh, but we do offer the community table, which meets on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays. You can make arrangements with Guy Carpenter if you are one of those folks who really are looking forward to eating with a friend or two. You can make you can sign up and make reservations by calling Guy. So that's something that we do offer, and that's a prime dinner time, five to six thirty p.m. So if that's something that you're interested in and really look forward to, by all means. Uh, we accommodate only up to eight uh, residents in there so that we can properly distance everyone out there. So just keep that in mind. And let's go, let's go ahead and move on to a much happier topic. We're going to talk some birthdays now. So today is Friday, October 30th, and we have Gertrude Lenton and Susan Flatten for October 30th. Then our Halloween babies, the last day of the month, we have Douglas McBride and Olga Priatula. Then for into our new month, November 1st, we have Beverly Hirsch and Helen Berry. Happy birthday, you two. Uh, on the 2nd, we have a, a few birthdays. Gay Howell, Liz Seymour, Mary Hansford, and Mal Mary Alice Sanders. On the third, we have Bob Mills. On the fourth, Jenny Guth. 
And on the fifth, we have two, Herbert Dreisbach, Wanda Smith. And then we'll go ahead and wrap up with the six. We have Suzanne Dimer. So happy birthday, everyone. Looking forward to starting a new month where we can focus on things to be thankful for. <laughs> so um, well, we have a lot to look forward to, even though there's still a lot of isolation going on and um, do it, just doing things differently than we've used to. Our routines have certainly changed this year, but there's still much to be thankful for. So if you have your health, if you have your family, if you have your loved ones that you can pick up the phone and call, then I say that's a lot to be thankful for. And of course, you always have us too. So give us a call if you need anything. Hope you have a great weekend. Happy Friday. Be well.